Appropriation Committee. This meeting is being recorded. Um, pursuant to the open meetings law, we are recording this message, this meeting, uh, and we ask all the committee members and any community board members in attendance to please keep your um, video on. And um, if you're not speaking, this goes for everybody, please be mute yourself so we don't have any feedback. Uh, welcome to the September 19th meeting, the first meeting of the season, so to speak. And the first thing I wanna do is um, go around the virtual table and have all the committee members introduce themselves. We're, we're truly fortunate uh, tonight to have a number of new members on the committee, and I really want to welcome them. So let's start with um, Andrew. Why don't you introduce yourself? And maybe um, each person just very quickly um, mention a park that you were fond of. Park or playground. Andrew, are you on the call? uh andy dietrich's on the phone all right we'll come back to you carolyn i see you do you want to just briefly say hello uh good evening everyone i'm carolyn hubbard coming on weary i think you're still muted i took it off wait a minute it's not we can hear you I, it, it's from my end it looks like i'm unmuted yeah hello no, everyone i can't I'm carolyn hear you. Hubbard coming on weary. andrew i see you're with us now Give me a minute. Barbara, uh, Carolyn, we'll come back to you. We'll, Andrew, Barbara, Barbara, how about saying hello Barbara, and mention one of your favorite parks? Barbara, I think there might be something wrong with your with your audio setup because I think we can hear you, but you can't hear us, maybe? All right, Candace, let's go to you. I know you can handle this. Oh, it's just me. Oh, golly. Yes. We can hear you. But Let's you go can't. back to Carolyn. We can start from back. the top. <laughs> I'm sorry. OK, are we? Uh, may I introduce myself? Absolutely. Hi, I'm Carolyn Hubbard, common on Weary, a longtime board member and member of this committee. Um, my favorite park, I guess, is South Oxford Park because it's the one I use the most. And after that, sometimes um, uh, <clears throat> Tyler Gore. Thank you. I can help us go in alphabetical order. How about Douglas Bettner? Hi, everyone. Thanks, uh, Taya. Um, uh, your friendly neighbor from University Towers. I'm a new board member at mid, uh, mid year replacement. Um, right on uh, Willoughby between um, Ashland and Fleet and uh, uh, Flatbush. So Fort Greene is near and dear to my heart. It's literally right there. Um, but also just a fun fact, I've um, worked for the city government for the uh, New York City Department of Parks um, for a few years in their concessions division. It's the division that does um, the RFBs for, for concessions on uh, city park land and also for state parks um, uh, years ago where I traveled throughout the state and did um, audits on um, state parks, literally in every region of New York State. So I'm um, happy to join and then bring any kind of um, background that can to the committee. So nice to see everybody. Thanks, I, Douglas. I, thank you. I, I want to apologize. I didn't have my speaker on. So um realized that after I left. I hope I didn't meet, miss anybody else. Um, did you want to be called Doug or Douglas? Doug is fine, Barbara, please. Okay. I'll change it on the thing, but Doug is absolutely fine. Thank you. All right. Um, did you have anyone else speak, Taya, while I was? No, we just said hello to Carolyn and to Doug so far. That's it. Oh, OK. So <clears throat> Carolyn has spoken. Good to have you here tonight, Carolyn. Uh, then we go to Candace. Hi, everyone. My name is Candace Harrison, and I'm a member of the committee. Um, and my favorite park would have to be Washington Hall Park, uh, which is near my house on Washington Avenue and Park Avenue and also on Hall Street. Um, and my other favorite park would be Fort Greene Park. Thank you. Uh, okay, Andrew, let's go back to you. Okay, my name is Andrew Lesterwetsky. I've been in the Parks Committee for a while, probably getting ready to retire. 
my favorite park, of course, everybody's going to say Fort Greene. But knowing that nobody would say anything about Parham Park, I love that park too, because I love to see the kids and their parents going to that mini pool there during the summer to swim. And of course, Underwood Park, which is close to me because I'm on uh, Clinton Avenue and Willoughby, Vanderbilt. So obviously those parks are dear to me. Okay. Um, how about, is Melinda on the call? Yes, Melinda is on the call. Hi, everyone. My name is Melinda <clears throat> Rasco. I am brand new to the committee, so thank you. Happy to be here. Um, I'm actually in class right now. Uh, I'm a PhD student, so we're hosting class virtually today. So I'm multitasking, um, okay. but yeah, going to get this done. Um, but yes, yeah, so my favorite park is Brooklyn Bridge Park. I love that park. Um, I spend a lot of time there and it is it has been like one of my favorites. Anytime there's something going on in Brooklyn Bridge Park, I feel like I need to be there. Um, so that's that. Did you have any other questions that you wanted to know? No, just something? right now. Um, that's name, great. The park. OK, great. Thank you. Thanks. All right, um, Sabrina. Hi, everyone. Um, good to see some new faces. I'm Sabrina Rezzi. I'm a member of the committee and the board. Um, I have two young children, so I get to experience a lot of the parks in Brooklyn Heights where we live, including Cadman, which I'll name as my most used park, although we live close to Adam Yarich uh, Park, which is a great one as well, um, and many of the playgrounds. So. It's good to see everybody and uh, to be back. Great. Um, is it Tom or Thomas? Who I'm not sure how to pronounce your last name. We heard you at the um, at the general meeting. So yeah, I Thomas know is fine. Thomas. Okay, great. Yeah. Do you have a favorite park? Yeah. So oh. um, <clears throat> my name is Thomas Huji. Um, I apologize. I'm going to be camera off tonight because I am sick with COVID nineteen. Oh, um, well, thanks for being here. Yeah, of course. Um, my favorite park is uh, not in the district. It's called Mafera Park. It's in Ridgewood, Queens. Um, it's the park I grew up going to. It's got a huge, beautiful playground. It's a lot of space to run around. And uh, it's actually got huge baseball fields because it used to host a semi-professional uh, baseball team back in the 50s. Um, so it's got a lot of history. It's a great park. Okay, that's great. Welcome to the committee. Um, Mackenzie Fillo, I love your name. Thank you. Uh, my name is Mackenzie Fillo. I'm a new member. And I guess my favorite park, or the one I go to the most anyway, is Brooklyn Bridge Park, which is where I run and watch birds. Huh, a birder. That's great. I should let you know that the Brooklyn Bridge Park is not run by the New York City Parks Department, but we do hear all about Brooklyn Bridge Park as well. <clears throat> and if you had been at our last meeting, um, you would have heard. And you can you can you know look at um, the minutes. We we had a presentation about how they are going to redesign the entrance uh, down at Fulton Ferry to the the park. And the one thing, they're very fortunate because they're not part of the city uh, parks department. They, they get their projects done on a much faster time schedule than the city parks. Jennifer, I see you. Let's hear about your favorite park. Hi, I'm a member of the committee and uh, I'm in Borham Hill. So it's kind of a park desert because there's nothing mm -hmm. here that I often, uh, so I go very often to Fort Greene to go to the market. And then I, I do a lot of walking in Brooklyn Bridge Park to get exercise. And then, of course, I've also been swimming, but that's in the Douglas de Graw, So that's technically in another community board. Uh -huh. It's a very small park. Yeah. So. Sounds great. Uh, Lenny, how about you? You, you have to unmute, Lenny. All right. Uh, 
As I was saying, I'm Lonnie Levington, and I've been a member of the um, Parks and Recreation Committee for a few years. Um, my favorite parks would be Fort Greene Park, which is uh, right out my window, and uh, Brooklyn Bridge Park, uh, definitely, because I don't think there's much more uh, you can say about uh, Brooklyn Bridge Park. It's 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 iconic. It's world famous at this point, and uh, deservedly so. So those are my favorite parks. Richard Morrow, I, I bet you love every darn tree in every park that we have. But you have to unmute. Yeah, I told you once that to me, the, uh, the park of the city is the whole entire city. Uh, the streets, every tree on the street is a park to me. Uh, and uh, I, I've been, I'm new on the committee, but I've been uh, uh, coming to the meetings for, I guess, about a year and a half or more. More. Uh, as a representative for uh, uh, Trees New York and the Park Stewardship Program, both of which I belong to. I prune all the trees in the North Heights, with uh, Houghton Landing, Vinegar Hill, the North Heights, uh, Dumbo. I prune all the trees that you see on the streets. Um, I also take care of, oh, I wanna, I'm gonna start that project now with the, the, the school here uh, on uh, Dock Street, the Dock Street School to see if they'll take over the uh, uh, either the triangle, if they'll go, go that far, or definitely the tree plants in front of their, their school to uh, uh, beautify them. So again, uh, I look at the entire city as, as a park. It is everything is favorable. Though I must say, um, when I went to South Oxford Park, that is a beautiful little park. I mean, it's really well kept and uh, has a little tennis court. It's like a small scale, but it, it, it's just a, a chanting little place so thank you and welcome all and i'm glad okay. to the team now yeah it, it's wonderful to have a full um range of people in you know instead we were getting very small so uh, i'm so delighted i i i love a number of parks I, I i do spend a bit of time in brooklyn bridge park uh and because it's outside, and the park I spend most time in right now is Carroll Park because my grandchildren live near there, and I, I think it's just an amazing park, and it's always well utilized. Oh, thank you, Taya. Um, and um, I also have a, a fondness for Commodore Barry and Kyler Gore because those are both parks that are I've been involved with, and I think are can be changed um, quite a bit. And Andy, we want to go to you. I didn't want to forget you. Yeah, um, no, no worries. So okay. um, I, I, I go by Andy. I write Andrew, but given there's already an Andrew, I defer and we'll go by Andy. Um, Andy Dieterich, I am a 25 year resident of Brooklyn, about a 15 year resident of Dumbo. Uh, I spent most time in Brooklyn Bridge Park, which I use a, a great deal. But I think my favorite was something I discovered by accident on a run a couple weeks ago, and it's the Naval Cemetery landscape, oh. uh, which is a beautiful little spot uh, in the summer. Um, uh, if anybody ever has a chance to poke their head in, uh, uh, so that's I think my, my 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 favorite. But it was fascinating when I was um, elected to the board. Uh, I've used I, I run from time to time as well, and I've been taking runs throughout the the district. And discovering all the beautiful parks that are scattered around the district it's been quite a it's, it's, it's quite remarkable actually when you see them on foot mm -hmm. uh, all together so very pleased to be a new member of the committee terrific um it, it sounds not only that we have new members but we seem to have enthusiastic new members so who could ask for anything more uh number three on this agenda is to approve this agenda can i have a motion to approve it Andrew, a second. Uh, Richard, you're oh, you can you can do that. Yes. Okay. Um all all in favor? Aye. Okay, great. Uh doesn't look like there are any opposed. Uh the the minutes from June. Um uh, Jennifer, I think you did those minutes, right? Yes. So thank you for that. Do we have any changes to the minutes? Okay, so we will um, see those as being um, 
adopted. Now we come to our presentation, and I, I think one of the we we've heard just now about favorite parks, and I think there's always an effort to increase the greenery in our district and uh, to embrace whatever land that we can that would qualify. So the Brooklyn, we're going to hear now uh, from a, a presentation on the Brooklyn Commons, which is very much a park-like area and certainly encompasses um, the soothing atmosphere of a park. I, I think if you, there's a lot going on there, but it's also you could just, I've sat there and you know, just relaxed and breathed in the green air. So um, we're gonna turn this over to our, um, and if you're not familiar with Brooklyn Commons, that's the area in the middle of Metro Tech. So we have tonight, uh, Michael Kim, Elliot Berenger and Sophie Welsh. I don't know if we have anyone else from uh, Brookfield Properties, but we're gonna turn this over to you. And knowing Taya, I'm sure you're all presenters at this point. And uh, thank you for being here. Um, thank you. My name is Michael Kim. I'm a design director at Brookfield. Um, we have uh, tonight a just a, and thank you everyone for attending uh, this evening. Um, hopefully you'll enjoy the presentation and have some questions and good back and forth with us. Um, we're looking basically for a letter of support for this oh. project. Um, just to keep in mind, um, we are currently in construction for, um, I would say, scope of work really is replacing the benches, replacing the light poles, and replacing a lot of ground cover and removing some of the um, shrubs that have been, uh, I guess, blocking views for a while. But anyways, that's a separate um, package altogether. This is really about signage improvements at the commons. You'll see some within this document, you'll see at the end a, a rendering that shows all the proposed changes, but really the focus of this presentation is signage improvements. So Michael, just so I understand, are you asking for a letter of support just for the signage changes? Exactly, yes. Okay, thank you. All right, let me move into the presentation. Obviously the commons is a, um, it's a 3.3 to four acre site in the middle of Metro Tech. It's an oasis for uh, both the students as well as the tenants and visitors alike uh, at the common at, at Metro Tech, um, basically a combination of office uh, and NYU. So this works. Uh, a little bit of context, obviously the aerial view of Brooklyn entire, uh, the second map shows you a little bit more closely the neighborhood of the surrounding Mr. buildings. Mm -hmm. Could you go ahead and share screen please? Oh, I thought I was sharing. Sorry. All right. Can everyone see the screen? Thank you, yes. yes. Can I, I can go back a little bit. All right. Borough level map, obviously an aerial at the neighborhood level. You can see the commons in the middle, the large green space. Uh, some views. Um, this is Myrtle Avenue. It's a D map street. Now it's a pedestrian thoroughfare. It cuts east to west, connecting J Street to Flatbush. Um, you'll see off to the side, there is a uh, basically a map that's one of the signs to be replaced. Also throughout the commons, and I'll have some photos of it, there are, you'll see signage. It's a, it's a bit of a hodgepodge of signs that have been sort of incrementally or additively added to the site. Again, another view of the esplanade or the promenade. And then obviously in the distance, you can see the commons itself. It's basically a bosque of trees. Signage at the corner, which identifies the streets, Florence and Myrtle. 
the corners of a lot of the buildings. Another view looking uh, basically west towards J Street. This is a view at the Flatbush um, cul-de-sac. And again, you can see some of the uh, signage here, well, basically a wayfinding monolith. This is again a view looking um, east towards the Flatbush entry. An example of one of the monoliths with the map of the commons. Uh, this has been recently sort of re, it's basically a new graph at the map. And our new uh, branding we call Brooklyn Commons instead of Metro Tech Commons. Another view looking down the promenade. Examples of signage. Again, you know, at the corners of the buildings, it's typically for wayfinding or address. Um, there are the flags. Flags are not doing anything with, they will remain in place and will again support general um, events. Uh, you know, working with our arts and events group will we'll change that based on a seasonal or monthly basis. Um, and another example at the bottom in the middle is again, one of the uh, monoliths for wayfinding and map. And then uh, this is one of our typical storefronts. So um, this is our proposal. It's a signage system. Um, it's a combination of monoliths, uh, wayfinding directionals, uh, street identification on benches, and building IDs with a directory of the retail tenants that are there as I go from left to right. It'll be a little bit clearer as so the deck. The signage is to be located in these areas. Uh, the A's are the major monoliths. Those are our welcome monoliths. And then the, you'll see the little blue dashes on Lawrence and Bridge. Those are sort of what we call monolith B. Those are also welcome monoliths, but they have a little bit less information. Uh, at the corner, as you'll see the little white dashes, those are uh, building IDs. Uh, again, if there's retail within those buildings, and one of the issues that we've always had is the arcades, and what's within the arcades isn't as visible. Um, so to the extent that the signage at the corner indicates what's within the arcade, uh, we, we'd like to implement that. Uh, the long red bars are what we call the bench signage. Those indicate the street names, whether it's Bridge, Lawrence, Myrtle Promenade. And then the yellow dashes at the corner uh, of the commons itself is uh, basically uh, directional. So those are posts almost like, um, well, basically posts with street names, similar to what we've seen here in the city. Um, a little bit more detail about these um, welcome monoliths at Flatbush and J. Again, uh, the front face would say welcome and the other three sides will include community events, uh, a directory, as well as a map of the tenants, specifically the retail tenants, although it could also be commercial tenants that are at the commons or at Metrotech. Uh, the last sign uh, is um, DCP or city planning required signage to you know, establish this as a uh, open to the public plaza. Um, just so you know, the community events, there's two versions of it. There's a digital version and then there's a static version. The, the version on the far right says alternate side C, that's a digital display version. So obviously it'd be easier to program and change. Um, currently our budget is supporting the alternate digital display, but obviously depending on how the project rolls forward, um, we may divert back, but highly unlikely. We'd like to stay with the digital sign. It gives us a bit more flexibility. These are the, um, what I call model B, the minor monoliths. Those go on Bridge and Lawrence. There's three locations, um, basically on the south side facing Fulton Market and then on the north side by the NYU. Lawrence, I always mix up the streets. Um, but again, it's a simple Brooklyn Commons on one side and then the um, city planning TCP um, required signage with their new logo, the chairs. Typically it will display the hours of operation. It would include an inventory of the trees that are on site, uh, the quantity of fixed seating, um, numbers to call, if if there's an issue or a compliment about the park um, at the plaza. 
This is um, a little bit more detail about our directionals. Again, these are uh, wooden posts um, set the corners of the commons itself. And then we would indicate uh, whether it's NYU on one end, Flatbush you know, Avenue at this direction, uh, Willoughby Street, so forth and so on. The materiality is um, both for the monolith as well as the directional. It's an Akoya wood. Uh, it's a sustainable wood product. Um, basically, it's a pine that's been treated and it ends up being quite hard and durable like a, a tropical wood, but it's obviously not a forested wood product. Um, the wood is, I would say, a strawberry blonde. It tends to weather uh, to a gray, much like Ipe. Um, but again, it's, it's a forested pine or sustainable pine product. I believe one of the parks currently in Williamsburg is using it for their benches. But the wood is something that we specified very early on in the project. It's the material that will um, cover all our benches, our picnic tables. Um, and so we thought to extend that language to the monoliths, again, to, to extend the theme and an aesthetic. So here's a bench and you'll see a little bit rendering there. So, you know, the benches have backs, the, you know, it's again, it's an Akoya wood product um, and there's a metal fascia. So on the fascia, just the signage is, it's meant to be Myrtle Promenade, Lawrence Street, what have you. Again, it's, you know, a little bit bold, but, you know, again, provides you a little bit of uh, orientation at the site. Uh, the building IDs and uh, directories, again, these will go at the corner. The, the reason for black is that, you know, we have a bunch of different materials on site, whether it's masonry, precast or stone. Um, and we thought black would be a way to tie it to, again, uh, the language of, of the design proposal. Um, you know, our lampposts are black, um, the bases of the benches are gray. So again, we wanted to um, sort of continue and extend the language and the aesthetics. So here we go, you know, again, indicative of um, or illustrative of the concept. So the, the signs are punched and so you'll be able to see the material through it. Um, it also ties to the directionals and it also ties to the uh, monoliths. They're all sort of a hammered black finish or version of black finish. Some are hammered, others will just be painted. Again, this is just a, a notional idea of how the wood will weather over time. Um, you can sort of power wash the wood, but they say you need to be careful about the pressure. So it, you may be able to restore some of the wood tones. Um, moving quickly, this is a separate discussion. Um, for a while, the Commons has had a, a bit of a hodgepodge of signage. I mean, they do follow through with it in a certain extent with um, flag signs, as well as uh, basically a band sign for tenants. So if you go out there today, Chipotle has you know a version of this, except I believe their symbol may be or the flex sign may be round. Um, we're looking to square it all up. And again, create a little bit of a system so that you know tenants future and possibly present will follow you know these formats. So you know, there is a one by one foot sign that has you know their brand or logo underneath it, the shop name hours of operation, no smoking, handicap signage here, you know, again, try to make it a little bit more regular. So um, again, there's a system, but at the same time allow for, uh, I think the tenant retail to, to sort of brand at the same time, whether it's slightly different top font faces, uh, typefaces or um, logos or color. So again, this is an example of one of the blade signs. The reason for the blade signs is that, you know, if you, again, if you go to the commons, um, if you look at the arcades, uh, a lot of the retail tenants are within the arcades and it's hard for them to have a presence sort of on the major promenade. On the side streets, uh, Bridge and Lawrence in particular, there are tenants that have blade signs already, but those are direct onto pedestrian. Um, uh, I mean, those parts of the street are pedestrian oriented and not vehicular, except for FDNY or, or emergency vehicles. Um, so visibility is there, but when you look at the promenade itself, it's it's a little less visible. So to the extent that we can have these blade signs on the comms in the promenade is, is an ask. Again, this is just a standard 
uh, band sign. Hypothetical versions of, of what we would like to see. Color may not match what they're proposing, but again, we took some liberties with this. And then again, this is just a rendering, sort of putting it all together. So you can see, you know, how the Okoya wood and the black uh, work together for the major monoliths. It ties into the, the benching and the platforms that we have, the light poles. And then again, in the distance, you can see how um, blade signs would function on the promenade. Again, trying to bring a little bit of attention to what's happening within the arcade uh, with retail tenants. Um, you know, retail tenants may choose you know, depending on the materiality, as an example, one Metrotech tends to have stainless steel for their band, two Metrotech has uh, sort of a green frame. I believe 15 Metrotech may have a green frame as well, or no, aluminum. Um, so again, there's a variety of materials. So to the extent that we can build a system to, again, frame the identity of tenants, frame the identity of the commons, um, that's what we'd like to do. So that's basically the proposal. I'm happy to um, scroll back or answer questions, um, but it's a pretty simple system we'd like to think. Uh, do we have any questions from members? Doug, I see, uh, I was gonna say members of the committee. Doug, why don't you start us? Hi, Michael, that was um, great. Just, just following up on this piece, have the tenants agreed to this? I mean, has it been rolled out? I mean, how's the reception from the tenants? I mean, is this a voluntary thing? Or is this something that Brookfield will, will mandate as part of its lease agreements with, with the tenants? But I, I understand this is separate from what you're asking. The yeah, um, so I believe almost every tenant that we've negotiated with um, and our marketing brokers or retail brokers, um, everyone has said like, can we get signage <laughs> on outside the arcade? And, and to date, it's one of those things where um, it's not been done before. So we're not quite sure why it hasn't been done or why it hasn't been asked. So we're sort of asking the question now, um, if, um, you know, obviously I think we wanna make it in such a way that it's a system so that, you know, if, it, if a tenant does ask and we do grant it that they, you know, follow a particular format. Um, you know, again, on this on the side streets, it's been done. There are blade signs, and all tenants will ask for some level of signage on the sign band. So again, we'd like to keep it systematic. Um, it's probably less of an ask on the sign band because that gets changed all the time. Um, Blank Street just installed their sign. I think um, China is another new tenant. Uh, Nye is another new one. Um, they're all putting signs and potentially a uh, flag sign, but it's it's not been done outside the building on the promenade. So that's... Yeah, and that's, that's kind of why I asked Barbara and, 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 and Michael, because if you don't do it right, then it looks hodgepodge, right? You know, if it's not standard down, down the promenade and some are there and some aren't there, it's very strange. If they're not filled and some are filled, it's not very strange. So I'm just curious the extent that Brookfield controls and make sure that they're all, with, all there or all not there. Um, that's all. Thanks, Barbara. Yeah, this is Elliot Berenger from Brookfield as well. I can speak a bit more to it too. I think to Michael's point, um, every tenant's asking for this. And if anything, it's been a limitation in, in getting, you know, the tenants we think will help, you know, drive more people to the area and really help uh, bring in the retailers we want to, you know, make the commons, you know, even better. Um, Carilla did have a sign that was uh, approved as a one-off uh, that was on the outside of the car arcade, but a similar thing. So I think the ten tenants are honestly um, really eager to be able to put this up and just add more visibility because it is dark under some of those as well, depending on the time of day. So I think this will help a lot. Uh, I, have a, any... I have a quick question, Barbara. I was just wondering if just very quickly, who's responsible for maintenance and how is that, what's the source of funding for that? Is that tenant common, tenant charges or how does that work? For the signs, it would be uh, it'd be a com it's a negotiation between us and the tenants. I think we want to have them to have signs up as well, but that, that'll be part of the lease negotiation. Generally, it'll, it'll fall with the tenant, though. Any other committee members have questions? Any board members here who are not committee members have any questions? Okay. Um, Barbara, can I just one follow-up i'm sorry to be sure not a problem i guess i guess i'm just not quite understanding 
is it going to be requirement of the lease agreement? Like will every one of these places have these signs protruding out? Or will it be up to the individual tenants to decide whether they want to install one? Because again, go, it goes to the standardization of the look down the promenade. So I guess I'm just confused. It will Brookfield be putting these in at every tenant location? So it's kind of standard or will they just be one offs based on whether the tenant agrees or the current standard, this current status of the lease agreement? Well, I think it's, we're, we, we won't technically be able to amend the lease agreement unless they want to, of course. But I think going forward, for sure, we're going to make it a requirement. And I think tenants are going to be asking for it anyways, as soon as they see one or two of, I mean, the Chipotle has one on the side of, uh, of, of one metro tech and everyone we get asked about it all the time. So I, I like that one. It actually is really cool. I see that one all the time. When I come yeah. <laughs> it makes a big difference, right? For the retailers. So. Uh, Thank so you. I, I had a few questions. Um, I'm assuming these signs are all ADA compliant, the, the colors and the fonts and all. Um, to the extent, I would say if as a requirement, yes. We would. Okay. Generally, as a rule for almost every signage and for every tenant, um, we do go through a uh, design review of their proposal. So, um, you know, if it meets the ADA requirement or ADA requirements are, are there, we'll, we'll address them with the tenant. All right. Well, I'm, I'm saying the, the signs you're presenting to us tonight with the black and the white and the cutouts and the, the height of the letters in the signs, I'm, I'm assuming that they will. Um, they will meet ADA right. requirements. Okay. And, and then I I know what a blade sign is, but maybe you could just explain it as, and also um, what a flag sign is. So I, I also sometimes get confused between the two. I believe they're the same. A flag sign and a blade sign basically are perpendicular signs attached to a building. They, they stick out from the building. Yeah. Right. Um, and one of my concerns is always when I see signs, they're generally too high. You know, and I'm wondering how, what the height is of these blade signs. Let's let's talk about them. Uh, I would have to look at my design drawings and I don't have them offhand. I imagine they're going to be, I'm going to guess. Is there a standard um, height they usually are? There probably is. I think it's anywhere from eight to 12 feet, so. Okay. Yeah, I mean, eight feet 12, is probably better. Twelve is high. Right. Eight is yeah. probably more reasonable. All right. Is is there any way we could we we could ask that they be eight feet high as opposed to twelve? Well, I'd like to hold a little bit on that or hedge a little bit on that because um, part of it is I think context. The one thing you've no if you'll notice at the Commons, it does slope from. J Street all the way to Flatbush. And so, um, you know, the signs like the light poles will march kind of down the slope. And so I, I would think that eight feet is probably the right number, but there's also a visibility and, um, you know, sort of best practice. And again, I don't have my signage designers on this call, but um, we'll try to work it that way. I know the Chipotle sign is actually I think, quite high. That may be probably around the 12 foot range. Yeah. Um, it, it's hard. I, I, I see this with, signs all the time especially the city signs they're very high and i i don't it seems to me they should be lower so people could see them thomas i see you have a question uh yeah thanks barbara um are is are there any uh public bicycle parking spots within the commons and will any of the signage uh, provide wayfinding to those bicycle parking spots? And if not, has there been any discussion amongst the tenants about whether the lack of public bicycle parking is limiting how many customers are coming uh, to the area? So with respect to bike parking, um, I mean, it's a good suggestion. I believe there is public bike parking in the underpass under one metro tech. And we will be installing um, public bike racks at the Flatbush entry, the J Street entry. And I believe there was one over by um, the old NYU administrative building. It, it's one of those older buildings that's, um, I think, just north of 15 metro tech. Uh, our goal is to, you know, keep the number of bike racks that were there previously. Um, we are also in, in the current mode 
Um, obviously, they're not public per se, but and a lot of our buildings are starting to install bike rooms. So um, it's a good point. We'll probably need to, within the mapping or directional wayfinding strategy, include something about where bike parking is located on site. Great, thank you. Your point about, um, yeah, have we heard from our retail tenants there's been a lack of um, bike parking? Um, we, we have not at this time. Uh, thanks. Uh, before we move forward, I just wanted to thank both Sabrina and Andy for taking the minutes tonight. So thank you. Andrew, you had a question? You have to unmute. Okay. I just wanted to reiterate, I, I, I don't want to spend too much time because I'm sure you, the people that are designing it are, are, are we're well aware of it, but I, I would like to understand that there's going to be a commonality of all the signage in, in the... Uh, in the common areas. And I understand that, you know, one company's signage is going to look different, but I think all of them should be synonymous as to size. A Chipotle sign will be different from somebody, some other companies, but I think size-wise, they should all be identical. Uh, so, it, so the whole thing has like a commonality of a look on it, not just lettering, but size as well. No, that's that. That was the uh, the impetus for a lot of this, especially for the retail signage, is to make the blade or flag sign the same. Um, it's roughly, I think, two by two feet, three inches wide. It's going to be mounted at standard height. Let's just say hypothetically eight to nine feet. Um, and what the tenant wants to do, sort of within that frame, is a little bit up to them. I mean, again, we could work with them and try to manage best their logo and brand and aesthetic. But um, we want to give them a little bit of freedom. But at the same time, we do want to set up some rules and some order to exactly as you're saying. So it's not a free for all. So right. just to follow up on that, when the, the sign that's just going to be flat against the entrance, I, I aren't aren't those all going to be the same height and yes. length? Okay. All right. Yeah. That's consistent already. That's already um, okay. That's already built into the architecture that we have right. today. And I, I realize that we should have given um, members of the public an opportunity to talk about this before we, we started the presentation. So at this point, is there anyone who is a member of the public, meaning you're not a member of the committee or the community board who would like to ask a question? This would be a good time for that. Um, you could raise your hand or... Right. Taya, do you see anybody? I don't see anyone. I don't. Okay. All right. Um, so thank you again for the presentation and answering the questions. Does anyone want to propose a motion um, concerning a letter of support? Well, I I I would. Um, I could propose. I, 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 you want. I propose that we, we accept the, the uh, proposal as written. Second. All right. Well, as it really, we don't have a written proposal. Um, proposal as stated. Okay. So we're talking about having um, universal requirements for signs in terms of um, height and width of the signs, the, the colors, and the materials to be used in, in the signs, both for wayfaring and the signs that are on the buildings. Does that uh, pretty much, Michael, um, cover what you need? I would say that, you know, again, it's um, support for our proposal to have a system of signs that both uh, in terms of wayfinding, as well as uh, directory, as well as building identification and commons identification, that's all basically a system. And then on top of that, we put the retail. Again, that's an, a second system. It follows the same logic. Um, all right, I think I missed one thing. You said wayfinding, directory, directional, building, building directional. ID. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right, Richard, does that sound good to you? That sounds like what they spoke about. Okay, is there a second to that? Andrew, second. thank you. Is there any discussion on the motion? 
This is for committee members. All right, I don't hear any discussion. Um, all right, so all those in favor of the motion, raise your hand. So, All right. It looks to me, Taya, that everyone is raising their hand. That's my count as well. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you for the presentation. And oh, what, let me ask you one last question. What's the timeline that we'd, we'd start seeing these signs? <clears throat> well, we first need to get to, to our construction process of, um, you know, replanting the plant beds and putting in oh, the new okay. benches and everything. The signage, uh, you know, we didn't want to go ahead without everyone else's input in the community board and, and this group here. So um, I hope you're leaving the dog. Oh, yes. No, no, no. All the okay. art is going to remain in place. If our work in, affects the location oh. of an art piece, we will relocate it somewhere else in the comments. But yeah, no, the dog is staying. Okay. All right. So as um, Taya just indicated, this will be presented to the general board on October 19th for their approval. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. for your You're time. welcome to stay, but we understand if you want to move on and start working on those signs. So, uh, <laughs> Thank you very much, everyone. Really appreciate it. Uh, thank you. Thank, thanks for coming to the committee. Bye. All right, so that leaves us with, uh, or gets us to the, um, the chair's report and just a, a few quick things I wanted to mention. Um, if you were at the general meeting last week, you heard me mention that Susan Smith McKinney Stewart Park is now open. And that's a park we followed for a long time. Uh, I haven't been over there since it opened. I was there uh, a couple of months ago. And um, so it's always great to see these projects, capital projects come to fruition. Uh, on uh, a more troubling note, you probably know that there was a shooting in McLaughlin Park, which is a park I visited. It's on Tillery Street. Uh, I think the park has a lot of potential, has a beautiful field. And um, I think they could really benefit from a friends group. Unfortunately, there was a killing there, I think from involved a couple of students coming right out of school from across the street. And um, it, it's not what you wanna see happen in, in a, in a park and I, I haven't been over there to see how people who use the park um, feel about it. But as I said, it's, it, it's always um, uh, uh, sad to hear of something like that. And of course, we don't really have people patrolling these playgrounds um, or enough people doing that. So it's, um, it's, uh, it, it's, uh, it's unfortunate. You want to feel safe in your playground. Uh, okay, so that brings us to the statement of district needs. And Taya, I'm going to look to you to help us out here uh, because I know it's changed a bit since we last looked at it. Um, you know, I apologize. That should not have remained on your agenda tonight. Oh. Um, the, because hopefully everyone has received the district needs survey that was released on Friday. Um, I am tentatively extremely excited because I didn't check from I think Friday evening until this afternoon and it may already be the most uh, popular survey that the board has ever issued. So please, I'm gonna drop the link in the chat. Please take the survey yourself and please share it with all of your community groups, all of your block associations, all of your tenant associations, all of your tenant advisory associations, all of your work groups. It is very easy, it is. CD2 needs. Um, it's only eight questions and I have heard good feedback that it is difficult and it should be. It is difficult to prioritize for 130,000 residents um, because as we know, something is urgent to everybody. So even though it's not very long, please take your time um, and please um, 
especially take your time with including any thoughtful comments about specific projects in each of the seven policy areas that you would personally like to see funded in the next fiscal year. And if you have any questions, feel free to email the office. All right, so does this, um, how does this impact the statement of needs we've been working on? So this is going to generate more material for that big, uh, for the board only process where you go through each of the requests and you assign it a, num a, a level of urgency from one to five. Because what we're hoping to do is in the end, we're gonna need um, 40 expense requests and 20 capital requests prioritized by the board. But first we do this public input process. And it'll, oh. the survey will be open for a full month before it's closed. It doesn't close until, we just opened it Friday and it won't close until the 11th of October. Okay. And then you will have about a week to vote on it and you will also be ratifying that at your October 19th to meeting. Okay. All right. Oh, I think, yes, Thomas, thank you. I think I was typing too fast. You Use Thomas's link. I had to type on mine. Oh. I will check. I don't remember seeing that email, but I will do that. Um, all right. I think that brings us then to community forum. Um, I'm sure Mr. Morrow has something to share. Well, um, I, I'll tell you, I, I, I thought I would relax from that this week because I didn't know what to expect. So uh, I'm not really prepared to, uh, other than to say, uh, uh, stewardship program is, is the, oh what i did want to suggest <clears throat> was that uh you mentioned about getting uh, speakers in to uh, talk to us uh, there are two organizations one in the bronx and one in staten island they're actually city agencies that grow all the plants for the parks it might oh. be very interesting to uh, to get them to speak uh to tell us how we how parks plants are picked as maybe some of us who are working on uh, helping community parks can reach out to them personally and see if we can get particular plants uh uh to fit in but they grow all the indigenous plants that uh that you see in the parks trees plants pretty much everything that comes out of the Bronx I, ha I have the listing but I, again I didn't write it down not knowing what what to expect tonight um and of course, uh, Trees New York is always, uh, uh, always, always looking for new pruners, uh, not pruners, tr pruners, uh, to, to help uh, you know, keep the street trees uh, pruned well. well. That sounds great. Do you have uh, contact information for the, the was it the Staten Bronx and Staten Island? Island? Yeah, I do. I, I'll get that together. I, I have it on the, in a file. I have to uh, dig Okay. Out. That would be great. Send it to you, and I think it'll be great. The other thing was, um, I had mentioned it once before, the uh, Parks Police Department. There's a uh, one of the captains uh, who's in charge of our area. Uh, would be would I, I heard him speak at some of the uh, uh, community partner programs that I've been to in the community council. He's quite intelligent, quite good, and he can really explain the what how the uh, police, uh, park police. They don't carry guns or anything. Uh, they're the guys in green. Uh, um, uh, it might be an interesting uh, thing to talk to him and, and uh, uh, maybe tell him if we know parks that are we, we feel are troubled or not troubled or how they how they allocate uh, the, the patrol people to these uh, different areas and how they patrol the parks. How often I, I thought those uh, three things were, were, were would be pretty interesting for us. That, that does. It reminds me. I wanted to bring in someone from the parks ranger park rangers because I've heard them speak recently and I think it's really interesting yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what they do. Yeah. Oh, well, the city has, uh, the New York City has a forest uh, that, that we have a number of forests here that are that are well kept. Uh, the park rangers will patrol them and as well as uh, the, the stewardship program. We go into the forest and prune and, and uh, keep the, the trees uh, healthy and, and uh, check for bugs, you know, uh, sort of uh, dangerous critters and stuff. So it's, it, it, we, have, we, have, we have substantial forests still in New York City. So that, just some suggestions. All right, thank you. Is there anyone else who has something for Community Forum? Yeah, I wanna say a little bit 
Um, I don't see myself lighting up on the maybe on my screen, but I see my little icon. Uh, I sent a letter out to uh, all the board members, uh, not knowing there were going to be a few new ones also, about uh, a survey I did uh, that Taya suggested in June at the last meeting that I might want to do. Uh, I counted the number of apartments in the buildings in a two Lenny, or three can I just interrupt you for a minute first for the new members? Um, Le Lenny is particularly interested in dog runs. So um, that's what this is, is, that's right. is that's aiming right. at. Buy a little for the newer people right. and others that uh, are just at the meeting here. Um, University Place is a is a piece of park department property that is that is pretty underdeveloped um, and uh, it's an ideal place for a dog park in our uh, community district being that it is so densely populated and there are so many dog owners and dogs surrounding that uh, that uh, piece of property a very visible piece of property it would take the overflow from uh, Fort Green Park because they have too many dogs in there that, that cause problems. Um, it would be something very aesthetically pleasing for the community. It's something that the community is enthusiastically behind. Uh, there's already a friends group in place. Um, we met three of the four criteria so far for that park that uh, the Parks Department needs. The fourth one is the uh, approval of the main community district board. That is the last piece we need to put in, last place, piece we need to put in place. And um, I think it's time that we should vote on it uh, and send it to the board because the support is overwhelming. There are over six, well over 600 dogs in a two or three block radius. Uh, and uh, I, I'm sure the number is pretty much higher than 700 because I couldn't get into a number of the buildings. And some of the buildings are not fully occupied as yet because they're new. And the biggest one is still under development. The 94 story tower that's going to be called, already is called Brooklyn Tower. Um, the need is is very apparent. It's there's an overwhelming need for it there. Uh, people within um, Fort Greene Park like the idea, think it's a great idea. People I know in the Parks Department think it's a great idea, and uh, we just need the community board as a whole. We need their approval at this point to make this go forward and happen. So I think it's time that this uh, Parks and Recreation Committee passes along to the board for their approval. The only objection that, that, that was raised was that it was near the uh, train tracks below, but there's already a dog park, Union Square dog park that is directly over the uh, train station, that major hub at uh, Union Square. There's no problem. The Parks Department just completely renovated it, upgraded it, um, redeveloped it. So there is no obstacle other than getting this um, approval at this point from the main board. And uh, it's time that I think we need to pass that to them for their approval. All right. I think what we will do is I'll let all the new members um, on the committee look at your email, and then maybe we'll have a fuller discussion about it in a, at our October meeting. That's a good idea. So okay, and then um, see what we do then. Um, I, I I don't have all the names. I mean, they're all here, and I guess if uh, I'll forward if, it, I'll forward it again to everybody. You will forward um, it. Okay. Okay. Chair Zoller Gringer? Yes. Um, if I could suggest, actually, your October meeting will be October 17th, which will be too late for this to be considered for the FY24 district 
budget requests. So I, I really would recommend uh, Mr. Uh, Leonard that um, have everyone in your you and everyone in your uh, friends of group complete that survey and request it. That's exactly the kind of thing that can be requested through that district needs survey. Uh, they should complete the survey? Yes, Any that survey is for anyone that lives or works in the district. Well, that's a good uh, thought. It's a good, it's a great, it's a great idea, but we still need the main board to approve it. That's, that's the fourth piece. That well, if it's in the statement of needs, it will be up for approval. Correct. That's the fastest way to do it. Okay. Okay. I will, um, I will get on that. Great. And I see Andrew Otto, I see you're here. Did you want to speak? Oh, I'm, I'm kind of attending just because it's been a little while. Um, I could give a quick little status update with some things that have happened over the summer with uh, in regards to Bridge Park 3 and the multi-use court, but there's not too much to say. So only if you'd be interested, I suppose. Sure. We're, you know, so Barbara, um, Barbara, just I'm taking minutes Barbara, before we jump to that. I'm sorry to interrupt, but what did no. we decide to do on the dog run? Are we are we are we going to circulate that so that it's I, on I will circulate um, the next meeting? Lenny's email, but in the interim, um, so you can see it if you haven't seen it yet. Um, and Taya suggested that people who are interested in supporting the dog run put it in the survey so that it's considered that the district statement needs is going to be voted on at the general meeting. So we will have an opportunity, um, you know, it, it has, it to, has do to do with how many people think it's an important issue, important enough. There will be many issues and there will all be voted on. It, the, the issues that get the most vote will be the ones um, that, you know, are put into the statement of needs. Okay, so it does or does not come back to this committee in October? Well, we might discuss it again, but in terms of including it in the statement of needs, that would, we won't be able to, it will, the statement of needs will have already been voted on by the time we meet next. All right. But I assure you, this is an ongoing issue, and um, I think we'll probably be have discussions from time to time on it, because we, we have in the past. Uh, I, I would say that I, I think a concern, the, the Parks Department has been concerned that this proposal is on top of a subway. And um, I mentioned Kyler Gore Park before. There was a visioning session about that park and it, it, it's getting, and there were a lot of people there who wanted a dog run and um, in that park. And again, the area where it could have been would have been over the subway tracks and the parks department was not supporting that. Um, there well, is going to be a dog run at the new um, abolitionist plaza. And so that's one new dog run mm -hmm. uh, that we know is coming. Barbara, it really is not over the tracks. It's not over the subway and uh, there is already a dog park that is over the subway. Right, you, I know you've mentioned that. The parks department uh, just redid completely uh, from top to bottom. There is, and it's been there for 30 years, uh, approximately 30 years, more or less. There's never been a problem with it. So right. that there really is no uh, problem being at next to near or even over a dog over the subway tracks. Yeah, it's just the, the parks department has the fine has the say over what you know what um, where the dog runs could be, oh, I, and I've suggested to them that perhaps because this is not the only place yeah. that has been suggested for a dog run, maybe they could suggest places that they would approve for a dog yeah. run because there's a lot of the desire there are a lot more dogs in the area now and there's a lot more interest in having more dog runs that's why this spot is ideal and it's an argument that doesn't hold water because so. it's it, it just doesn't all right so andy does that answer your question 
I think it answers the question, um, uh, except that are we, is, is this committee being expressed, asked to express a view on it at the next meeting or or is this, are we gonna leave it so that individuals can respond to the survey, but it's not? No, it, individuals will respond to the survey. Perfect, that answers it, thank okay. you, Chair. Great. It means every individual at this meeting could respond to it too. That's right. Exactly. Exactly. So Andrew, back to you, sorry about that. Sure, no problem. Um, so, right, uh, Taya just put the link to the presentation for the new members that we gave to the board uh, in the spring. And um, we're still kind of working on trying to get um, the Farragut houses, which are really close to Bridge Park right. Creek, involved. Um, I, I had a contact finally with the uh, president of the Tenants Association there, but she unfortunately passed away um, shortly after oh. I got her contact, which was unfortunate. Um, a month-ish later or something, so pretty recently actually, I was contacted by the, the her replacement. And so I'm kind of in dialogue with her, a very slow dialogue about how to move forward, but they seem interested. Um, they're Could you just, in, for the new people on the committee, yes. just very briefly tell us who you represent and what oh, you're yes, trying to accomplish? Sure. Um, I am representative of the New York City Bike Polo Club. And for a brief intro of what that is, you can see the presentation that Taya um, put there. We went over that. Um, but with uh, bike polo and a few other uh, sports that we think are underserved by parks in New York City, we're trying to advocate for a multi-use court design in a location somewhere. Um, we've identified, uh, well, the one we're looking at right now is Bridge Park 3, um, which is close to the like the bike lane entrance to the Manhattan Bridge near Dumbo, if you've ever been there. Um, that, that's a location that, that uh, the park is a little bit run down. It would be nice to see a, a project there and some, some love given to it. So, um, yeah, that's that's our ang angle on it, but we really want it to be a, a community thing and make sure that everybody is interested, like everybody around is involved and interested in the design process. Um, it would also be good for pickleball. And, right, exactly, um, the other sports. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, the other sports in the coalition currently are, um, there's a street soccer group, which is like a regular soccer, but much smaller, fewer people and it's played on hard court. Um, pickleball, and there's a really cool um, urban lacrosse group that uh, uh, does a lot of youth uh, lacrosse games and practices, and they, uh, um, they, I think they play lacrosse on regular lacrosse fields, but they also play uh, box lacrosse, which is usually played on a smaller, more like hockey style rink, and they do a lot of like practicing on handball courts. A lot of these sports have this problem where there's all these handball courts in the city, and we try and play on them, but the parks department kicks us out. So we're trying to engage with the city and figure out a solution. I have a question for you, Andrew, if you don't mind. What do you think? How do you, how do you organize? Like, assume that you that this is all successful. How do you how do you organize who uses the park at what time for what activity? Uh, that's a great question. I assume if there was a conflict, it would be the usual parks permitting system. Um, but I don't have an answer for that, totally. Yeah, as a new member, I'm not sure how that, I mean, I'm familiar generally yeah. just from urban legend on how that works for tennis courts, et cetera, but I think it would be an interesting question for a multi-use park with so many people interested in. Yeah, yeah. I believe, I, I believe with the other, like we've, we've gotten permits for, there, there's two types, okay, I only barely understand this, so if anyone else here wants to step in and, and explain how this works for the parks, but there's two types of permits you can get one of them is for like a special event and they're kind of a little bit more flexible about like maybe what special events can go in what kinds of parks and then there's um a sports permit for like a regular time and place on a, on a park and they're pretty strict on those um really you can only have a permit for the sport that the park was built for for those things if i understand correctly Well, thank you for that, Andrew. And we'll, we'll be eager to hear how things are going on that. Uh, is there any new business or anyone else for community forum? All right, I think that brings us to number nine on our agenda. If no one else has something to bring up for this evening, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. 
Andrew, did you want to bring something up or? No, you motion to adjourn. Okay, adjourn. do I have a second? Seconded. Thanks, Richard. Candace, all right. I'm assuming everyone's in agreement. I see hands up. All right, thank you. And, um, you know, get out and enjoy your playground or park. <laughs> to be continued. Okay, thank have a chair. good night. Stay safe. So, Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.